Okay. All right. So I believe we have begun streaming. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Faculty of Medical Sciences 2020 orientation. This is the first time we're going to be having one online. So this is our first welcome. Um, and I almost said welcome boys and girls, but in truth and in fact, there are no boys and girls here anymore. You are now the next generation of medical professionals and we're excited to have you here as part of the family, as part of the faculty. Whether you're coming from sixth form in straight into the university or you're transferring from another faculty, we welcome you. You have made it into MedSci, whether it's MBBS, physical therapy, dentistry, nursing, you have made it, but guess what? The work has just begun, all right? Now, my name is Jared Harris. I know I do look a bit young. I am actually an assistant lecturer in the physical therapy department. So those of you who are here doing physiotherapy, you will see my face, albeit behind a mask and a face shield from six feet apart or behind a screen, but you will be seeing my face later on in the semester. But my name is Jared Harris and I'm going to be your chairperson for today's meeting. Now, just to introduce you guys to medicine as a, as a field, it's more than just one profession. It's more than being a doctor. It's more than being a physiotherapist. It's more than being a nurse. We are a team. And, and for those of you who may be into sailing or other water sports, you know that the rudder is a very small part of the boat, but without it, the boat can't go anywhere. And many of the largest and most complex machines, some of the largest and most complex technology, can't function without the very smallest piece. So don't think that just because you're not this, you are not important or as important. We work as a team for the benefit and the service of every single patient that we come across. And that really is our goal, all right? So it's important to build that team atmosphere, that team perspective, and to work as a team for the benefit of society. So that when the rest of us here who will be instructing you get old and gray, we can have the confidence that we train you guys properly to take care of us, right? All right. Now, it's going to be a bit different this semester because of the fact that we are still in a pandemic and a lot of our teaching is going to be done online. So it will be different and there will be challenges, but they can be, they can be overcome and we're going to be working together as much as possible to help you overcome these challenges so that you can get the best quality education possible all right now i'm going to hand over to the heads of the program from the heads of the schools and the other program directors so that they can welcome you themselves and then we will move forward in the program so i'm going to invite Dr. Wilson Clark from the Clinical Pharmacist Program to give her welcome and greetings. Hello. Good morning. Move on. Move on. 
We're hearing you now, Dr. Carter. You're hearing me now? Yes. Okay, okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Camille Wilson Clark. I'm the program director of the Doctor of Pharmacy program, and I'm here to welcome everyone to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. But especially, I want to welcome the pharmacy students. So, all the students registered in the Doctor of Pharmacy students, you can raise your hand in the in the chat room so I can see who um, are here and present in the in the Zoom uh, meeting, um, but a special welcome to you. Now, as Ms. our chair, Mr. Harris said that we're going through a pandemic. And so um, from all of my new um, students coming in for first year, unfortunately, we will not be meeting face to face for this semester. Um, you will meet us online. And as much as possible, we will try to make your transition into the university, into the Faculty of Medical Sciences as smooth as possible. And as Mr. Harris had said before, that there'll be some amount of challenges and we're gonna try as much as possible to work with you through those challenges. So again, to all students entering the Faculty of Medical Sciences, welcome. This is going to be a new paradigm for us to work with. And so I just want you to embrace change. Sometimes it's not easy, but I want you all to just embrace change and just look forward to learning and sharing with each other. And as soon as we're able to meet and hug and, you know, welcome each other physically, um, we look forward to that time. So all the best for the year. I wish you no, um, what do you call it? I wish that you'll have internet all the time, that you won't lose electricity, that you will be able to have your classes and be able to communicate with your faculty as much as possible. And these are what I'm gonna wish for you this year and as much as possible to still try and interact with students in medicine, in physical therapy, in nursing, in dentistry, because as it is said that we're one faculty and we're a group of health professionals, so we must all work together. So all the best and I move back to Mr. Harris, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wilson Clark. And as she rightly said, sharing is going to be very important. I say this as a, recent, a relatively recent graduate. Um, it's very important to share your information. Uh, don't hog the knowledge that you have, share it. You learn by teaching other people, other people learn by teaching you. And it's going to end up benefiting everybody at the end of the day, especially the patients that we're here to serve. So I'm going to move on to Dr. Jones, who is the program director of the undergraduate dental program to give his greetings. Good morning, Mr. Harris, um, chairperson for today. Um, thank you for allowing us to all meet together in this new normal. I'd like to especially welcome all the new students to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. It is going to be a different paradigm, a paradigm shift for you as you join us. And we want to show you that even though the impact of COVID-19 continues to cause us to shift and be fluid in how we plan for your new academic year. We just want you to be as prepared as you can as we help you to transition. And there are three areas that I want you to try and focus on in semester one and throughout your time with us. First, proper time management. That will help you in all the adjustments to the new timetable. If the timetable has to change, how you have to study, that's going to be very key in your transition to us. Two, good organizational skills. Coupled with your time management, if you can organize yourself to do the online classes, to do the follow-up, the review classes, then you'll be able to matriculate very well. And thirdly, keep open with the administrative 
staff, with the undergrad office. This will help you with all the challenges that will occur in semester one. See you face-to-face, -face, practice the proper sanitation protocol, wear your mask, and practice proper social distancing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Jones. And we're going to move straight to Ms. Rose, who is the Program Director of Radiography, for her to give her greetings. Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We hear you. Thank you so much. I must apologize for the absence of a video, having some technical challenges here. But I echo the sentiments of the previous presenters in extending a warm welcome to the Faculty of Medical Sciences and special welcome to those joining the School of Medical Radiation Technology family for the upcoming academic year. Of course, life's journey has taken you to this point where you have made a very significant decision to become part of a noble institution, and for that we salute you. The School of Medical Radiation Technology trains diagnostic imaging technologists as well as ultrasonographers, and we are situated on the first floor of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, as some of you are already aware, having already come in to collect your, your packages. Our school motto, out of a shadow, comes light, is testament to the work of our founding father, Wilhelm Conrad Rongen, who discovered X-rays in 1895, as also testament to the evolution that has really brought radiologic sciences education and practice to this point where we are poised, of course, poised to continue the evolution way into the future in terms of technological developments and expansion of knowledge. Our program, of course, of straddles both the practice and education. We align ourselves, of course, with the strategic direction of the university, its mission, vision, and core values, which would mean that we are, these are integrally em embedded, rather, in our curriculum. As a relatively small program, the support structure is, 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 is good. We, we have support from the faculty, administration, and also a very active student body, as some of you may have already been aware. Our program is three years in duration and comprises didactic and laboratory and clinical components. We recently experienced a spate of changes to the way that we deliver our content arising from the COVID-19 pandemic as your, as your um, host um, has already indicated. And of course, these changes will require some amount of self-discipline and self-directedness. The university, however, provides support in terms of the opportunities for adapting to the new normal. Just bear in mind that education is a spiritual journey a spiritual journey of discovering what motivates the human spirit. It is also a social journey in terms of learning from others. And it is an academic journey in terms of becoming skilled at knowledge that is scholastic and theoretical. So between our co-curricular and curricular activities, we aim of course to develop the whole person. I close with a quote from an anonymous writer. This is it. The problem with success is that it sometimes comes disguised as hard work, end quote. And so I encourage you to embrace hard work because success is disguised within. Best wishes for a successful course of study. We look forward to our in-house orientation on Friday when you will be provided more detailed information on the operations of our program. Welcome. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Rose. Hard work is definitely the key to success. 
And that's something that will, you guys are going to hear that for the next, how, however long your program is, whether it's three years or five years, you're going to be working hard. But at the end of it, I guarantee you, the, the feelings of success will be worth it. So I'm going to hand over to Dr. Paul Singh, who is the Director of Basic Medical Sciences, for him to give his greeting and welcome. So let me start by saying good morning to you, Mr. Jared Hart. Thank you very much for a new colleague in the faculty to come. Um, and welcome to everyone. Um, good morning to both students and staff and colleagues joining us on this um, interesting uh, orientation, which is really the first one that we're having by Zoom in view of what is happening in the country, particularly with the coronavirus uh, increasing cases we noticed right up to yesterday. Now, my name, as I, as I said, my name is Dr. Paul Singh, who introduced me earlier on, and I'm the director for the BB Med Sci program. I just want to point out that this program is a three-year program in which students are trained in basic techniques in basic medical sciences, and then in years two and three, they go on to specialize in uh, either anatomy, physiology, or pharmacology. By this name, you would realize that um, it, the, the lecture is arranged and supplemented by a series of labs. So this is a big challenge going forward, I must say that uh, it's a practical course and those students will be very eager to be in the lab um, doing their experiments. But we try our best to record some of these information and send it to you. But more of this. I'm sorry, Dr. Singh. Could you yes. speak up a little, bit, a little bit more loudly, please? Okay, I think I need to take off the mask properly. That might. Yes. Okay, just a moment. Is that better now? Can you hear me better? Yes, I think that's a bit better. Okay, thank you very much. So I was taken up on the last point when I said that um, this medical sciences involves a lot of practical work, a lot of bench work, science, and so forth. And we are going to pre record some of this information. So we apologize in advance. I don't know some of you are eager and willing to get going into the labs to do your experiments. Um, but let's look here at this university, which is a light shining in the West, let's, let's call it that, uh, based on our uh, motto. And you're here joining what we call an academic community, community, common unity. So you're all together in this, um, uh, in this university, trying to increase the first one would be the acquisition of knowledge. So I want you to think of knowledge that you would be you know, acquiring, remember learning is a lifelong process. So this is just another stage in your career in the path of life. Now, of course, paramount to that would be understanding this knowledge that you acquired. So understanding uh, is followed, of course, with by wisdom. So I pray that God will grant you the wisdom to be able to, this knowledge that you acquired and you've learned and, and you understood that you can apply it, especially in uh, your patients, uh, you know, in, in medicine, physical therapy, um, all, all the different specialties. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out again is that our orientation is scheduled for Friday at 10 a.m. And further details of the program would be given there. I'm going to end that. I, I was going to give you a, a quote or a video clip from the Black Panther movies, you know, Chadwick Boseman died, uh, we did the hard day sometimes we get, but I'll leave that for another time, you know. So I just want to welcome you, and you can look back at that movie, especially the opening part, and the challenges this young man faced and how he arose above all these challenges and succeeded in life. So just want to point that to you. So welcome again, and God bless you as you go forward into this semester and into the academic year. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Singh. And what you said about lifelong learning is definitely, definitely applicable in medicine because by the time I graduated, I they did some digging into some new research and realized that they had upgraded some of the textbooks that I had just finished learning from. And so I had to begin the process of upgrading my own knowledge, right, almost the day after graduation, to put it, to put it plainly. So now I'm going to hand over to Dr. Gordon, who is the, program director of the physical therapy program for
for her to give her welcome and greetings. Uh, we're not hearing you, Dr. Gordon. Are you hearing me now, Jared? Yes, we are. Good. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the University of the West Indies and to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. And a very special welcome to the physical therapy students who I will speak to a little bit more on Friday morning. As was mentioned by Mr. Harris, this orientation is indeed historic as this is the first one that is being done virtually. And you are part of this history. As you, you are entering the University of the West Indies at a very interesting time. As very, uh, a lot is happening in the nation, a lot is happening in the region, and a lot is happening in the world at this time. As you journey with us at the University of the West Indies over the next three to five years, I can almost promise you that you are going to have some good times and you will have some bad times. You will have some exciting times, but you also have some possibly boring times. You will have some uh, very rewarding experiences, but you'll also have some disappointing ones. But in all of this, in all of these circumstances and situations that you will face, I encourage you to maintain your focus. Remember, why you have come to the University of the West Indies. Work hard and learn much. I could not end without saying, given the times that we're in, uh, encouraging you, I should say, to, as you've been hearing for the past six months, encouraging you to wear your mask, to sanitize and to keep your distance. Wear your mask, sanitize and keep your distance. Take responsibility for your health during this time. So once again, welcome to all of you. And I pray that the time that you will spend at the University of the West Indies these three to five years will be indeed the best years of your life. So welcome and God's blessing for your journey. All right, thank you, Dr. Gordon. So now we're going to hand straight over to Mrs. Monroe, who is the program coordinator or program director, I should say, of the nursing program. Good morning, everybody and a special welcome to the new health team of the future. I say the health team because in this room um, are, is, you know, there is representation for, from each uh, discipline within the health sciences. So welcome. Of course, I have to identify especially my new nursing students. Welcome. I really wish I could see your faces. Uh, I, I hate COVID-19 because of this, can I tell you? I really wish I could see your faces, but um, for everybody in the room, just give a big woo -hoo. You know, you have embarked on an amazing journey. You have already demonstrated a formula for success. And this is for every single one of you in, in this um, orientation today. You've demonstrated persistence, I mean, once everybody heard about COVID-19, it's almost as if life halted and you didn't allow it to stop you, which shows that you have that persistence and hardiness needed to succeed in the program. You've also shown resilience. I mean, you know, there is so much that is happening and so much that can um, discourage you from, from entering into the profession at a time like this. Uh, years ago, um, one, of, one of my favorite areas in nursing is to look at our history. But years ago in the health sciences, there was this huge war in Crimea. 
And that is where we saw a lot of heroes in the health team emerging. So I'm looking for heroes in this health team at this time when we're dealing with a global pandemic. I want to encourage you to, you know, even as you've heard about acquiring knowledge, I want you to, 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 to know that you have already had knowledge inside of you. you. You are creative, you are inventors. So don't, don't think about coming to university as an opportunity to acquire knowledge only, but also to share your knowledge and your experiences because it's already been conceived in you. All we'll be doing is extracting what is in there and then you know mixing it up with some other other things and and then you know you're gonna have something that is wonderful at the end of it the orientation for the nursing program is on uh the 7th of september we're going to be doing that virtually and you will hear all about the exciting things about nursing this is for the for the nursing students i want to encourage you to let discovery be what excites you when you finish a course, don't say, Lord, thank you, Jesus, and close the book. Because like Dr. Singh said, learning is a lifelong process. So continue to be excited by discovery every single day and always come prepared to share something that you have learned. God has deposited in you something special that has made you enter into the professions for such a time as this. And we are excited to be sharing this journey with you. So God bless you and every ounce of success is yours. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mrs. Monroe. And now we are going to hear from Dr. Trotman Edwards, who is the program director of the undergraduate medical program. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, may I welcome all students from across the uh, Caribbean islands. Happy Independence to my Trini peeps. My name, as said before, is Dr. Helen Trotman Edwards, and I'm the MBBS Program Director. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome, as everyone has been telling you, the healthcare team. So welcome to the UV Mona campus and to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. Congratulations on your achievement. The fact that you are here attests to your resilience during these unprecedented times of COVID-19. This resilience will augur well as you navigate this new journey upon which you are about to embark. During these differently difficult times, I have come to embrace the concept of pivoting and I would like to invite you to do the same. For those who know something, a little something about netball, you pivot when you land on the ball of one foot and you execute a swivel motion while keeping the landing foot firmly planted on the ground. You use the pivot to change direction and escape your opponent. Believe you me, you will need to learn how to pivot. Your friends and family will be the foot that keeps you firmly planted on the ground as you change directions to overcome on some of the obstacles and hurdles that may come your way. Do not be afraid to pivot. Finally, be kind to each other. No man is an island unto himself. COVID-19 has brought this into sharp focus for all of us. So though you may be physically distant from each other, maintain the human touch and reach out to each other. Once again, I'd like to welcome you and we are all here to help you through this important journey in your life. The MBBS students, MBBS and DBS students, I'll be meeting with you on Friday and we'll go into more detail. But once again, everyone, welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Trotman Edwards. I want to thank every one of the program directors for bringing their greetings and welcome. I hope every student that is watching has been able to identify their program director and at least began to 
acclimatize themselves to the fact that this is really happening. You are entering the medical profession and you are about to begin a journey of a lifetime. So now I'm going to hand straight to Dr. Tomlin Paul, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, to give an address to these new students coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And thank you. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful team of program directors. In fact, I think my job as Dean is very easy. I almost have uh, very little to say after hearing the words of wisdom uh, from our program directors. I think, um, Dr. Trotman Edwards, that pivoting stroke in netball, we use it in cricket um, and we apply it and we can hit some good sixes with, if we follow that pivoting stroke in one day cricket. Um, as you know, CPL is going on now and um, in spite of COVID, we've been able to still keep sports alive. But um, so incoming students, members of our academic administrative or technical team or technical staff within the faculty, our heads of school and programs in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, parents, I know there may be some parents in our audience this morning, uh, let me say good morning and welcome to everyone. You are creating history today by joining us in the Faculty of Medical Sciences. And I would say even in spite of, even if there was no COVID pandemic over our heads, you would be creating history as a new cohort of students joining us today in 2020. That history is even more significant because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. A few months ago, we welcomed our 2020 year with great expectations, you know, Happy New Year and all of that. And little did we know that 2020 brought with it several challenges. We have all felt the effects of many lockdowns and border closures and all of the stuff that is that coronavirus brings. As a university, like other institutions, we were forced to change our modus operandi. We moved within a short window from face-to-face -face learning to remote or online learning. However, we've, been managed, we've managed to pull through because we remain committed to the task. And I want to encourage you today as you join us, the Faculty of Medical Sciences, to think very much about commitment. I think it's an important, you've heard from the program directors pretty much the range of things that you need to do to keep grounded and to be successful. And as much as we always say there's the secret of success is, it really is a whole plethora of approaches and things that we do that keeps us grounded and keeps us successful. And I believe that within all of what you do, commitment is critical. That commitment is critical. Each of our areas in the Caribbean society has been impacted one way or another by COVID. And we have responded, let me start by saying how proud I am of our faculty and how proud you are, and you should be, as you learn about the Faculty of Medical Sciences here at Mona. And I start by sharing with you, during this COVID pandemic period, we have stepped up to the call to duty. We have been doing a number of things within the faculty. Our students have been working and our faculty have been working. We have been involved with the Ministry of Health in a range of activities, the contact tracing, the emergency operation. We have a call center operating right now on the campus run by our students um, and taking calls, responding to the needs of members of the society in relation to the pandemic. We developed a formula for sanitizer that we have, we have developed the product rather, which we have been distributing to the campus and to agencies across Jamaica. Our FAMD students, some of you are here, um, very, very proud of this effort. They took the lead on that. Uh, we have been involved with the Solidarity WHO trial, looking at new drugs and new treatments for COVID-19. And our very Department of Microbiology is involved in the testing for the COVID, for the coronavirus. Across the faculty, I'm very proud to say that we have been engaged hands-on in responding to COVID-19. And I think, I want to make the point that as much as we think of this pandemic and there's fear, there's anxiety, there's concern, I want you to put that aside this morning and to think of 
as health professionals, you're coming into the playing field. And what is it you're going to be bringing in terms of knowledge, in terms of your own thought, your approaches to responding to this pandemic? The question of disease, the question of viruses is not new. When I was in medical school, we had an outbreak um, here in Jamaica of um, polio. We had a small outbreak of polio and we were able to get involved on the front line with delivering vaccines, giving vaccines. I remember going out to the community with one of my teachers, setting up a tent and a booth and documenting patients and children and giving the polio vaccine. So we get involved and that's the nature of medical sciences. This faculty is not sitting down. We are moving forward. We are engaging. We are managing the risk. And you've heard Dr. Jones and others tell you about managing the risk. That's critical. But I want to excite you today and encourage you to say that we are on the front line and you're joining, you're joining the faculty at a very interesting time in that, in that front line. So I welcome you to a life of, not just today, but I welcome you to a life of commitment and service. We in the faculty are committed to providing each of you with a world-class education. Among us today are those of you who signed up to become physical therapists, clinical pharmacists, dentists, nurses, radiographers, basic medical scientists, and physicians. Our goal within this faculty is to ensure that regardless or irrespective of your field of study, you will become skilled caregivers and leaders in your field who will go out and change the lives of members of the wider community, the Caribbean, Jamaica, wherever you are, and respond to the needs. I have two words for that. That process of the faculty being engaged and involved and responding to the needs of society, there are two words that I describe that as. And if you can guess those words, you're well on your way into the faculty. Or if you have an idea what I'm talking about. What we're saying is that we are not only a faculty of research and study and learning, we are a faculty with purpose. We are faculty that respond to the needs. And the two words for that is what you'll hear me talk about during the time that you have with us here is social accountability. We have a duty to respond. We have an obligation to respond. And that is a call to duty from day one. I know many of you have signed up and you said, well, I'm going to study medicine, I'm going to study nursing, etc." And you may not have thought as yet about the bigger call to duty as you join, as you come in this today, this early. You can achieve all of this, in fact, through commitment, again. And as your dean, I'm cognizant of the fact that you all decided to enroll in these various programs because of your motivation. I, I meet students every time and they said, Dean, I have to. This, is, this has been my life. I've dreamed about this. I always wanted to be a nurse. I always wanted to be a dentist, a doctor. And that motivation is what gets you started. Commitment is what keeps you going. I'm happy to have started in this very faculty not, not too long ago. If you, you're not seeing me face to face today, so you, you can't easily guess my age, can you? <laughs> but I remember coming to Jamaica from Trinidad um, some years ago and be landing at the airport and jumping on a very colorful bus. That time there was these, the, the big buses, but it, it was really painted very colorfully and taking that drive up on the bus up to the campus, the Mona campus, where I registered and lived on the best hall on campus ever. And again, if you guess that you're doing well on your entry into the, into the campus, I lived at Irving Hall um, for my time when I was studying medicine. But it is, you know, I, I, I was happy to come to medical school here. And today I remain committed. I committed myself to a program of study for five years. I was successful. And today I remain committed to service in health and to service in your education as health providers and scientists joining us. It is through our commitment as a faculty that we have managed to achieve a lot in a short time frame. I'll tell you that we started in 1948. So we're about 71, we're, we're 70 plus years old. We had just 33 students in 1948, 33 medical students. And within that, era, within these decades, we have grown to achieve so much. Our programs have expanded. You've heard the introductions. You're, imagine what it would have been like if we didn't have that growth. And this morning, I'm welcoming only medical students because we didn't grow. We didn't diversify. 
think of where we have come just by growing this faculty. Think of the impact the faculty has made. We, we did work, for instance, in eradicating severe uh, malnutrition in Jamaica through the work of our leaders, our teachers, our researchers. We have done work on developing the rotavirus vaccine for gastroenteritis. Professor Christie and team have been involved with that. We have, we celebrated something I'm very proud of. Just a few years ago, we celebrated the first homegrown professor of nursing, Professor Eulalia Kaur, right here in our midst. And colleagues, I, students, I must tell you that the nursing students are very blessed today because they're entering, they, they have a triple whammy on the history. Not only they're coming into the faculty and they're coming in during this COVID era where we are taking on the challenge, but they're coming in when it is the international year of the nurse and midwife. And I want you to put that excitement again into um, your life as you, 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 we start this. And all of us, we must congratulate our nursing students and our nurses for this tremendous time and the call to duty during this period. So I'm very proud to share with you that our faculty, your faculty, is committed to providing a worthy research environment also. We are here to mold your minds, to build capacity. I love what Dr. Monroe said about the, uh, the process of, you have knowledge that you're coming in with already, and you're going to use that and we build on that. I want you to think, I want you to direct your thought processes and not just to swat and learn facts and figures. My dream for you as students in terms of research is that by the end of your time with us, that you leave the faculty well-rounded, not only in the knowledge and science of your subject, but that inquiry, that mind of inquiry, and that you would have published a paper with one of our colleagues within this time that you're here with us. Um, I think that's achievable. You start working on it from day one. Find a mentor. We have, I have, to, in total, we have uh, some four or 500 members of the academic staff available to you. And it doesn't matter which discipline or which program they're, being, they're involved with. Reach out and we're there for you to respond. So the, the UE brand is strong, is strong. We are ranked in the top 5% of universities in the world. Um, we are doing well. Our FMS brand is strong. The Faculty of Medical Sciences is the flagship faculty still, and I am proud to say that, flagship faculty. We have a history of great names. I'll give you some homework. My first bit of homework as I wind up is to go look up and Google who is Sir Kenneth Standard. Make a note, Sir Ken Standard. Who is Sir George Aline? Who is Dr. Mary Sivright? And that's just a start. We'll learn more as we go through, but look up those three names, Mary Sivright, George Aline, Kenneth Standard, and start getting that good sense of who this faculty is and what we're about. We are faculty of achievers then and we are faculty of achievers now. As I close, I want to share with you some special projects that we have implemented to enhance your student experience here with us. We have established a health professions education unit across all programs. Professor Russell Peer leads that process. You'll get to meet him during the time. We have launched a faculty museum, which in spite of COVID, we are trying, we're going to look at how we can get this, some of that online to keep you um, involved with that. And Dr. Theon Jones, who you heard from dentistry, drove that process and got us to that point. We have established a Spanish for medical purposes course, which was introduced so that our students can be bilingual and can appreciate um, to study and work in an environment that speaks Spanish. And thanks to Dr. Colette Myrie Cunningham, who led that initiative. We have launched a clinical and communication skills lab to support the simulation lab in nursing and in the other um, sections and we are growing our capacity to teach and train using technology, using simulation technology. We have strengthened academic counseling and support to all of our students. And our Deputy Dean for Student Success, uh, Dr. Crawford Sykes, who um, is here in the, in the, with us this morning, has led on that and has driven that process. Uh, um, and the pro uh, other program directors have been keen in getting that also established. And lastly, among the many things that we can go all day, but I won't, we have established a social outreach agenda for this faculty, driven by faculty and students across all programs. I'm very proud of that program. And you know, in spite of, we used to go out to take buses and go out to very rural parts of Jamaica to deliver care and service. And we're gonna find a way to break through this pandemic to respond to the needs of society in that way with our students and staff on the same bus traveling together. 
that's a commitment I give to you. And that's a call I want you to, to hold, you know, hold me to that as you enter this faculty. We're not done yet. In this academic year, as you come in, I'm committing to strengthening the teaching and learning around a learning ecosystem. COVID-19 has given us challenges, but it has given us food for thought. It has given us avenues to open and develop what we can do better. And the faculty is committing this year to strengthening an integrated learning ecosystem that will support your work with care with us. So I want to say we have a vibrant student body and I'm keen to see you joining because our student engagement radar is moving up higher and higher as we go forward. And I want to have you become a part of that and to be um, engaged. I want to hear the voice of the students. We are keen to support your personal and professional development. We have a personal and professional development office, Dr. Jacqueline Goldburn, Dr. Mrs. Kadeem Campbell, you will hear from them um, even later today. They are on the front line of supporting you and developing, responding to your needs. It's not just about studying, but you have needs and we want to support you through this process. So our gathering today would not have been possible without the efforts of a dedicated staff. I want to especially thank uh, all of those involved in planning this orientation. I want to thank Dr. Theon Jones, who chaired the orientation committee, Ms. Andrea Henry, uh, members of the undergrad office who have worked to make sure we, we did this, we're gonna do it. In spite of COVID, we are going to get it done and we're going to welcome you and bring you on board. So as I welcome you to the most progressive, the most dynamic, the most productive academy for training health professionals in the Caribbean, I want to, I'm really honored for the opportunity to support you on this journey. All of us in this room, all of your program directors, teachers, admin, service staff, we take that duty seriously. We are committed to that duty. I want to encourage you to be committed to your program, be committed to the decision you made. You know, when the, um, as, as you go forward, keep focus, keep thinking. I challenge all of you to put everything into it. Without commitment, nothing happens. Don't lose your passion. Decide, commit, and what you said you were going to do long after the mood you said it, it has changed. Sometimes the mood changes and that's where commitment is needed because you don't feel it anymore. I don't think this is, you know. Now, if you have to make a change, that's fine. If you feel after assessment, this is not for me. We get some counseling. We have academic counseling. Your PPDOs can speak with you. But once you are in for the long haul, stay with it. Make goals, commit to them, and this will guide you throughout your time on FMS flagship. Welcome aboard, and thank you for choosing this faculty for the next few years um, as you stay with us. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul, and I'm sure all the students will have a deeper motivation. I myself feel motivated and I've already finished. So I hope all of our students are more motivated and excited and ready to really join the faculty and give it your all so that the rest, I guarantee you, I've said it before, it's the journey of a lifetime. I myself have just started and I've already finished. So it's something that you're going to keep doing and keep going and keep growing to become the best that you can be and change the world. As you rightly said, we're history makers. You guys are history makers. You're the first, this is the first online uh, orientation, but you're already history makers. You're a class, you're, you're a year group that will represent something that will be part of the wider success and the wider mission of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, all right? So we're gonna move straight into uh, guest, our guest speaker who will, educators who will speak to us who will enlighten us on learning in the new normal which is i mean i don't know about you guys but i'm almost tired of hearing the word new normal i kind of want things to go back to normal but that's not how life works so i'm going to hand over to dr mccoy stewart who will give us some insights on learning in the new normal okay so First correction, thank you very much. It's Mrs. It's not doctor as yet. Working on it, not there yet. And I too, I am, I am getting a little bit tired of the new normal, the new normal, but it is what it is. And this is what we have to work with. 
Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for having me. I don't know if I am so much a guest. I am a part of the university. I am a graduate student. And um, starting tomorrow, I will be a member of staff. So I, I, I am no longer a guest. I would like to talk about learning in the new normal. That's the topic I got. And it has to do with this shift, as you would have heard, and you are experiencing, that has to do with the COVID-19 impact. Now, what is this new normal? And what does it mean for learning online? For you, it means that there are going to be significant disruptions. Um, the significant disruptions mean that you're gonna have to make several changes. You're going to have to, I don't know what's happening here, it's technology. So this is one of the things that you're gonna have to deal with, technology changes. Technology has hiccups and you just have to find some ways to work around it. Give me a second, my screen is not moving. I could just talk, so let me just escape this. All right, here we go. All right, so significant changes, unprecedented changes. Most of these are going to be changes that you're doing for the first time. But more importantly, you're going to be learning new habits, new habits and new practices. And in order to carry out new habits for learning in this new normal, it means that you'll have to ensure that you accept this new reality, which, which there are experts who refer to it as the edge of chaos. It's that transition from the period that you're used to, the face-to-face, -to, -face, to this new and unknown online. But many of these experts think that this edge of chaos is an opportunity to do great things. And you would have heard so far of all the things that you can do that you will be doing as history makers. Now, when it comes on to learning, there are a few things that you need to bear in mind as you go into a, 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 a setting which requires more online than face-to-face. -face. So you're going to need to prepare a, a, a dedicated space for you to learn. Some of us live in, in a home where we have children. Some of us cohabit, we share rooms, but it means that you're gonna probably have a discussion as to how you can ensure that you have your dedicated space. You are going to need to get all the tools that you need, all right? Your headphones, your speakers, your laptop, internet if you need internet, credit to put this on, 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 put the necessary data on your phones. So you have to collate, you're going to have to gather and put all the tools that you'll need for learning. You'll have to get up, yes, it's learning. So you'll have to get up out of bed. You're going to get fed. It is good for you to start the day or continue the day feeling full, get dressed. So even though it is online, your lecturer may say, okay, turn your cameras on. Or if you're going on campus for your lab sessions, if that is still being, being done, you have to get dressed and get prepared. Get prepared means mentally prepare yourself and physically prepare yourself for class. Now, you're gonna organize your study area for success. So it doesn't mean that you have a desk, and you simply have a desk. Ensure that you have your tools nearby or on your desk. Ensure that you remove whatever clutter is there. Ensure that you have a space that is clean and that is ready for what it is that you're going to be doing. And for some of us, we are, have been doing face-to-face -face and interacting with persons on a physical level for so long, it means that we may need to get some skills set, some training, some technology-related tools so that we can capitalize on this new normal. Okay, so that is the first thing. The second thing that you'll have to bear in mind is creating a routine. What does that mean? When you create a routine of learning, you will have to set up a schedule. I use um, timetables. I have to-do lists and timetables and schedules that I put exactly what it is that I'm going to do on which day and how it is that I'm going to be doing. So set up a schedule and stick to it. Whatever you do, try and maintain it, okay? Establish learning goals 
and try to be realistic in all of this. For today, you may want to do the readings that was posted, the readings that were posted last week. For tomorrow, you may want to ensure that you do the quizzes. Be realistic. Don't put everything on a daily schedule because you want to be able to ensure that you can pace yourself, okay? Include breaks. Now, because you'll be spending more time in front of a computer, in front of a screen, because you're going to be sitting for most times, it is being encouraged that you take regular breaks. Now, regular breaks don't mean every two minutes. It means that every 30 minutes or so, you get up, you stretch, you have your water, you take your bathroom run if you need to, you have a snack, all right? And you don't just schedule them in. You ensure that you also take them. So you put them on your schedule and you ensure that you take them. Be prepared and be early. It is class, okay? You still have class. So try to ensure that you are early. If you can't be early, be on time. That's one of my mantra. And when I say be prepared, I mean, do your readings, do your assignments, do some independent work, check out a few things, be curious, activate that curious aspect of your, your, your brain so that you can find out. And track your learning goals. I read somewhere earlier where it says track your goals in the things that you have accomplished and not so much by minutes because you can spend two hours and haven't completed a particular task. So what you should do is you should try to track your goals based on the tasks that you have accomplished. And there are some apps and software that you can use to help you. You can do it by writing it out on a pen and paper and doing a checklist. I do that as well. But I also have apps that I use to help me to do so. So the Microsoft To Do is one thing that I Ha, and what I like about the to-do is that it has a section called my day, and that's a daily thing. And you put the things that you want to do and you tick them off as you go along. But you also have um, Trello, which is quite popular. And there is Notion, which has, it's, it has a, free, a free aspect. So it's called a freemium software. So it has a free aspect, which you can use as students. So create a, a, a routine and stick to it as much as possible. The other thing that you ought to bear in mind is, I'm sorry, is the removal of distractions. No, online comes with distractions galore. Online comes with social media. It comes with messages. It's called and WhatsApp. It comes with um, phone calls. And the kind of distractions that you will face when you're learning at home will be increased. So distractions aren't new, but they will be increased. So as much as possible, if you can minimize or remove these distractions, you do so. How? Use your headphones. If you have headphones, close the door, which means that you probably have to say, guys, I'm going to have a session now and therefore I want to be in. Remove the phone. If the phone is not your primary learning tool, if this is not the device you're going to use to connect, connect with, I suggest that you move it, put it in a different room, put it on vibrate, put it on silent. In fact, take it out of the room completely. Turn off the television or turn the television down, turn off other devices, the radio and so forth. Have all the tools that you need right there with you in your area, in your room or your dedicated space so that you don't have to get up and then pass the fridge and then go into the fridge and then you're in the fridge looking for something to eat or then you see your little sister and you decide to play or have a little chat with some, just have all the tools that you need right there, okay? And then the other thing that you need to do if you are online, it is easy for something to pop up or for you to say, oh, let me just take a quick peek to see what's happening on Instagram or let me check my Facebook status. You have block site blocking apps, which are quite useful that keep you focused. So a few of them that I've mentioned here include something called freedom. There is self-control. There is block site. There is cold turkey and there is focus me. So these are just a few, and they also have free versions that you can, you can try out. 
And remember, just have a little chat with your colleagues, your classmates, your family members, whoever it is in the space that you are, to say, I am going into my class just now, so help me out here. I, I, I need an hour in this class. I have a three-hour session here. I have a tutorial here. I'm trying to do this simulation so that you try to minimize and control as much as possible the distractions. Now, the new normal comes also with the idea of trading in your old regular study habits for some new ones. You used to be able to meet in a group physically and discuss. With the COVID restrictions, it means that these old study, study habits of meeting in groups and you huddle over and you discuss and you share from the same notes and so forth will not be able to, to, to continue. So what do you do? Well, if because you are born leaders, you're going to establish an online study group if one doesn't exist. If one already exists, find out how you can join it, okay? And you have different ways that you can connect virtually. There is WhatsApp, there is Skype, there is house party. Now, for the house party, you're not going to play the games. You're going to connect so that you can study. There is Google Meet, there is Google Hangout, there is WeChat. There are so many different video conferencing tools that you can use to establish an online study group. All right? You can use the library services and online sites more. You usually could go in and discuss, but you may find that you'll have to ramp up the, 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 the online um, access so that you can be doing that. Where possible, and I've heard from the other speakers, you have a network. You have a great network. So join the professional communities of, of practice, the, pr pr the communities of learning, find out from your mentors what you can do, how you can do, and become a part of a bigger system in which you can capitalize on learning in this online, in this remote, in this um, confining, I'll put that in quotation marks, confining space. And also brain me, brainstorm with your classmates, pick their brains, ask them, do you think that there are other ways that I, can, that I can succeed? How else can we do this? What else can we do? You'd be amazed at the kind of ideas that come, you know, just rushing forth when you think about these things. And the last set of points that I want to point out is practice self-care. We want to avoid emotional, mental, and physical burnout. It is a reality. This is just one faculty with a set of modules. You also have to consider your electives that you're going to have to take. So you don't want to stretch yourself too much. You have to try and maintain a balance. How do you do that? What are some of the suggestions? Well, stay in touch with your facilitators, stay in touch with your mentors, your classmates, and the other key persons in your faculty and within the university. Okay, so do that. Keep getting off sleep. So ensure that you also schedule in time for sleep. The body needs time to rest and rejuvenate. And during the day, if you can take a power nap, the literature will tell you that power naps are excellent. If you can take a power nap, you do so. Maintain a healthy um, diet. Ensure that you eat properly and that you eat on time. You're going to need all the energies that you can and ensure that you take regular breaks from the screen. Having classes that are dedicated to so much time online will take a strain on the eyes and on the brain, all right? On the back, on your posture and so forth. So ensure that you make um, the time to take your breaks. Take a five minute break, take a 10 minute break, stretch, walk, come back, just clear your mind and come back. And finally, where possible, engage in some form of physical exercise. You can do cardio, you can do yoga, you can do stretches, but ensure that you go through some physical activity in order to reduce or to avoid the burnout that is a reality. Now, the next slide simply says, are there any questions? I don't know if we're fielding questions, but just recapping five things that you need to bear in mind, okay? Get a dedicated space. Two, 
get a routine going, all right? Ensure that you do these things. It's going to be a deliberate choice and a deliberate set of actions, but that is how it becomes routine. Ensure that you remove or reduce the, the, the distractions that are there. Ensure that you change out some things that would be the norm to ensure that you are now participating more or pulling as much as you can from the online space. And finally, give yourself some self-love. Take it easy. Welcome to the university. Welcome to the faculty. And I'm wishing you all the very, very best. All right, thank you very much, Mrs. McCoy Stewart. I got it right this time. All right, wonderful, I got it right this time. Thank you very much. Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to be a bit candid with you guys. The advice that Mrs. McCoy Stewart just gave us is not to be put down once October 1st come and you get tired that September hype wears off. Keep it going, all right? Netflix can wait. On October 6th, when FIFA 21 comes out, it can wait. When the PS5 comes out in November, it can wait. Stay focused and keep, the, keep, keep Dr. McCoy, Mrs. McCoy Stewart's advice in mind. And you see that swatting thing that we carried over from high school? Put it down. It's not going to work. Especially not now. All right? Now, I understand uh, I've been re receiving a few questions from some nursing students. I'm not sure if Mrs. Monroe is still with us. Um, yes, but generally, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so I've received about three questions, but all of them have to do with uh, the face-to-face -face labs, whether or not they're going to be having face-to-face -face labs and when these labs will be. I'm not sure if you want to address that now or in the orientation, you can go into more detail. Yes, um, we are going to be having labs, but we will be addressing it in the face-to-face, -face, in the, sorry, in our specific orientation on Monday, the 7th. All right, all right. So the nursing students who have those concerns, you guys will get more information at your orientation, get more detailed information. Okay, so now we are going to have a presentation about the appropriate use of the Faculty of Medical Science, the infrastructure um, and facilities. We're also going to be having a virtual tour and this will be conducted by Mr. Craig Hall. Hi, right, morning, everyone. You hear me? Yes, Mr. Hall, we can hear you. Welcome, everyone. My name is Craig Hall. Just trying to get set up right here. Okay. Okay, um, welcome to the Faculty of Medical Sciences Teaching and Research Complex. Um, I know it's going to be a, a challenge in here as we're not sure where this pandemic will take us. But hopefully when the virus dies down, you will all return to, and we return to face-to-face -face interaction. While on your journey here, I hope that you'll come to realize that here will become your second home as you'll be transitioning into tomorrow's professional. Um, during your time here, hopefully, when everything dies down, I strongly urge that you'll take care of the facility, adhere to rules, and pay attention to signs and notices. I'll just share with you some items here that we'd want you to adhere to should you have to come to the building at any time during this time. No mask, no entry. Mask must be worn at all times. Temperature check will be done at the main lobby area. 
that so we have a security officer there and they'll they'll take your temperature please sanitize we have a san hand sanitizer affixed to the wall area so please utilize this hand sanitizer and sanitize when entering the building in all persons to enter the main lobby identification cards must be displayed on persons so that you can properly that you can be properly identified all right should we return at any time or if we have classes um adhering to the social distancing here are some of the rules for the lecture theaters and seminar rooms no food or drink are allowed no sitting on the back or on the writing surface of seats no extra chairs are allowed except those provided no student should interface with the multimedia system example the control podium which is at the which is at, which is at the front of the lecture theater or the lcds mounted on the walls and the support rooms to the back of the theater all doors are to be kept closed to ensure, to ensure sufficient cooling. Do not lighter in lecture theaters once classes are finished. And the important rule, no food or drink are allowed. So here I have um, some of the do nots. Um, this is not acceptable. Do not sit on the back of the chairs. No extra chairs should be placed inside the theaters because they damage the walls, the paintwork, etc. Rules for tutorial room. Now we have 20 tutorial rooms um, on block A. Some are on the, which we call level zero, and some are on level one. And the, see, the rules, here are rules that apply to them. No extra chairs are allowed except those provided. And with social distancing now, whatever is in the room, we have placed them there to adhere to the social distance protocol. No student should interface with the multimedia system. And those are the LCDs mounted on the wall or if we should have a projector in the room. Keep all doors closed to ensure sufficient cooling. Do not lighter in the tutorial rooms once classes are finished. We have common areas which basically we might not be using for a while, but should things return to normal, here are some of the rules for those common areas. Do not, room, do not move furniture around within that era or within the era that they are placed. Example, the sofas, the round tables, and the benches. Do not sit on the arms of sofa. Do not lay down and sleep in these sofas. Do not rest your feet in the sofas, whether with shoes or with shoes off. And when I say whether, I've seen persons um, lying in these sofas and having their foot all over in the sofas and you have to be mindful of other persons that will want or will be using the sofas as well so you can't be having your feet all over with shoes on in the sofas do not sit on the table here are some pictures that were taken <coughs> of the do nots We had a lot of the round tables that you are seeing to the left of the screen being damaged because of improper use. Chairs that were used here damaged the, the paintwork to the walls. This sofa should have been, the sofa in the top right should have been, should have been there. So someone, that person using it, placed it there and it impedes 
um, lab techs and other persons moving back and forth to labs. So it should not be placed there. Here's another example of what not to do. This was taken, um, you see a, a student sitting there on the arm of the sofa. This damages the sofa. Chairs placed in the middle of the common area where people have to traverse back and forth. So this did pull an all-nighter here and left it there. This is not good. It's another do not. And these are actual photos taken inside the building. Keep off the grass. The grass area on entry to the building, do not walk on the grass, use the paper stones that are provided. Observe and respect notices. Throughout the building, we have different signs and notices that are placed throughout. Please observe them. We have silence, no eating or drinking in some areas because of what they do in labs. So we urge persons not to eat or drink. Please observe the sign on entry to the building, um, to the main entrance, the opening hours, because um, 7 o'clock to 7.30 is when we have the building being freshened. And after hours, we expect everyone to come out for security purposes. Um, there are other signs also that are placed inside the buildings, in the building now, which speaks to COVID-19. Um, we share some of the protocols, so they are placed around inside the building. Also in the elevator, please observe the notice that is placed outside the elevator and inside. No more than four persons are allowed to use the elevator during this time. There are different restrooms inside the complex. We have staff restroom and we have student restroom. Now when you come onto the building or in the virtual tour, you will see where we have the restrooms. These are some of the furniture that were damaged throughout years gone by, but I'll just share them with you. So we have put in place now sturdier benches, which is to which is to the right of the screen. Um, right now, with the protocol, maybe not more than one person can use the benches at a time. So as a result of someone sitting or misuse of the chair, you notice the writing surface, what we call a tablet, has broken off. These are some other chairs where the wheels have broken off because of improper use. So we have had to replace these chairs with wooden legs for more durability. What used to happen is that you have students pushing the chairs around, driving them up and down in the passages. So that's how they got damaged. This is another example. Paint stripping off the wall because you have students that read, that put tables there and sit and strip the paint off the wall or have the chair too close to the wall so it damages the, the paintwork. Here's a close-up shot. Also, show the, fa the, the, the facility. This is inappropriate use. No sticking or pasting of any flyer is allowed on any surface. No walls, nor in the elevator, on the complex. To the front of the building, normally when you have election time going around for a guild, you have persons putting up flyers. This is not allowed. We have notice board that you can write to the FMS booking or you can contact me and we can display the notices for you appropriately on the notice boards throughout the complex. This is another inappropriate use of the facility. 
this is actual photo taken of different restrooms throughout the complex where you have persons just maliciously dump tissue into the toilet. This one here was somebody um, flushed a Burger King crown or a box into the, into the toilet and it was clogged. So we had to pull the, 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 the toilet off the wall to get, and this is what we saw when we pulled it off. All the pictures in the next slide were taken after the first session, first orientation session in 2019, after this presentation was done. So I hope that, you know, you adhere to the rules. So here are the cups after everyone left. This is what we found inside the theaters. So absolutely no eating or drinking is allowed inside. And these are not acceptable. What happens here is that when stuff like this happens, we have critters inside the, the, the theaters that you don't want, and it ends up damaging equipment. All right, contact persons. My name, I'm Craig Hall. For any queries that you have, you can email me. Um, for booking, hopefully when we return to normal, um, there's the address that you can write to for booking of tutorial rooms. And for other persons, you can ask at the security desk for Mr. Johnson or Ms. Russell. Thanks. Um, this is the end of my presentation. And just to address the, the virtual tour, the virtual tour will be up. It's not up today, but it will be up during the week. So enjoy your year and thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Um, Mr. Young, who is the um, Mr. Young, can you please share them? He's a lab manager. Can you please share them some of the lab rules? Okay, good morning, Mr. Hall. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our virtual orientation. Uh, Mr. Hall has gone over quite a comprehensive um, presentation on the use of the facility, and the, the use of the lab is no different. Um, save and accept that the rules in the labs that are presented will vary from session to session depending on the type of hazard that you'd be exposed to. But generally, the, the rule of the lab will dictate that you wear the appropriate personal protective equipment, which includes closed toe shoes, lab coats, lab glasses, and during this COVID period, a mask. The, the rules of the lab are not, to, not punitive. They are meant to protect you. Um, most persons misunderstand and think that the rules are to be restrictive and all of that. But they are really designed to keep you and the persons that you interact with safe. So that's, that's basically what it is. I mean, we need to make sure that during your time here that you are going through best practice you are not putting yourself at undue risk and anyone else that you will interact with after the lab um, they too will be protected if you are practicing um, the best practice that we, we um, encourage in the labs So for now, that, that's it for me. Um, we, we will definitely have to go over these matters once you're actively attending lab sessions and uh, we will guide you along the way. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Young. All right, so that brings us to the end of, the, of this part of the orientation. I would just like to extend thanks to all the program directors, Dr. Wilson Clark, Dr. Jones, Ms. Rose, Dr. Singh, Dr. Gordon, Mrs. Monroe, and Dr. Trotman Edwards. I'd like to extend a special thanks to Dr. Tomlin Paul and Mrs. McCoy Stewart for their address, uh, their addresses to us, as well as Mr. Hall and Mr. Young for giving us an introduction to the rules and regulations regarding the facility and the actual infrastructure itself. And I want to especially thank the IT team without whom none of this would be possible in the first place. So thank you all for your service and for your input. I'm sure the students and parents watching uh, will have a better idea and probably feel a bit more comfortable with what their, they, with they themselves and their child, in the case of a parent or guardian, is about to get themselves into. All right.